Chase Tree and Tractor Service with 25 years of experience in tree removal. Serving the mid coast of Maine, licensed and insured Maine arborist. Whether it's a pesky blowdown or a hard to get tree that needs removal. When you need an experienced professional, Jake Chase is the man for the job. Call 207 242 8961 or email him at chase tree and tractor service jc at gmail.com. LCTV is your nonprofit community media station. Please donate at lctv.org to keep us strong. Thank you. Everybody, it's was up time, and it's that time of the year where it's pumpkin fest. Mm -hmm. He's the mayor of the mills, Mr. Bobby Weir, who will have the most fantastic sausage subs down on Main Street, right in front of Schooner. There, yep. you've got TV Toby behind the, on the floor, and Dinah Day behind the camera. They, uh, are you ready for this pumpkin fest? Got a rainstorm coming well, Saturday. Saturday, see, I got. So that just in my book, that just cuts it down to a two-day festival yeah, rather than three. Right, days. right. So and actually, I think the people that are going to normally come on Saturday because it's going to be a downpour yeah. are going to come on Sunday. Yeah. Oh, well, they'll be here Friday. Yeah. Friday's going to be okay. Yeah. It's going to be a little cloudy and whatnot, but yeah. it's going to be okay. And and uh, we got some people coming. A lot of people coming from out of state. We got a <laughs> film crew coming from uh, Scholastic Magazine, New York City, that we're going to partner with and do some okay. bunch of stuff there and some pitches. So that'll be kind of fun. Yeah, the regatta you be, you'll be doing the regatta at the theater. The regatta yeah. at the theater on Monday morning. That's uh, a good take, folks. Yeah. Folks, yeah. go sit sit in the comfort of Lincoln oh, Theater. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 250 seats in there, I'd get one. Yeah. <laughs> a lot more comfortable than those rocks are. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, plus you get a stiff neck, you know. You're trying to see over yeah. everybody. Yeah. There's so, not a bad seat in the house at Lincoln Theater. Right. And the popcorn's good. <laughs> and the popcorn's good. That's right. That's good. Oh, at 9.30 in the morning. I don't yeah. know. So, how many sausages you got to sell? Oh, uh, we got 500 sausages. I cut 20 pounds of onions last night. Seven and a half hours, Mike. <laughs> you haven't got a teardrop? Left, my huh? sister chef leaves in Portugal. How dare him leave? That's, that's pretty nervy, huh? So, isn't it? Yeah. So, anyway, he's in Portugal. Will he be so. back for Monday? Sunday? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what he, all I know is he's not there yesterday. So He was MIA yesterday. Anyway, I'll tell you, folks, I got an education on onions. I never dreamed that you could get 200 pounds of onions shipped here from Idaho cheaper than you can get onions from Maine. So, and there you go, like you it. said, Larry, off camera, this size of softballs. And out of 200 pounds, there wasn't one bad onion. In Those the sweet world. onions. Delicious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I fried so, some up last night. They so, were pretty good. So, folks, I saved like, I saved like a half a dozen so yeah. I could show people yeah. what they are. And, you know, people that eat the and most. And you got them on those big sausage rolls, too. Yeah. The rolls and are delicious. The rolls are pantadozzi rolls. And so, anyway, people that eat the most sausages get a free onion. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, the it's, onions are free. It's incentive. <laughs> it's big incentive. So if you can eat like five sausages, you get a free onion? Yeah, you won't eat five of these. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, so what's so, so what new, are you what are you what's your favorite event in the in the pumpkin fest? What do you like best? Well, I like you know I like the uh, the derby is good because kids design these the pumpkin the derby pumpkin that was down the back yeah. pack lot in front so, of Weather Vane. Anyway, that's good. Parade's good. Um, the uh, what else you got? You got pie eating. We got pie eating for dogs and humans. You got yeah. arm wrestling this year. Oh really? Uh, where, I, I where's that going to be? I don't know where that's going to be. Well, Somewhere. I tell you what, I couldn't even the way my arm feels today. <laughs> I couldn't even get my arm up on the table. <laughs> Is Miss Sherry feeding you this morning? <laughs> oh my God! Your coffee. Yeah. So and there's uh, there's also the bounce houses are going to be inside oh, yeah. at the YMCA. They're setting them up in there today, I think. Yeah. So that's that's a kind of a newbie. The mm -hmm. problem with that is now you're moving all these people downtown. You got to move them back to the Y because they know soon to get here and kids want to go to the bounce houses and mm -hmm. so that's a problem. But uh, and then the regatta, yep. you know, we got that on Monday morning. So yeah, the buskers, you can come down and sing. Yeah, I'll play guitar. You sing. Okay. <laughs> They'll run us out of town, but yeah, right. 
Oh, yeah. let's shut down the whole pumpkin fest. Yeah. 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 And before tried. I forget it, next week, folks, we're going to be up in Tidewater's brand new facility up in Jefferson, and we're going to be talking about all the, you know, the fiber optic up there, and, and, and hopefully Randall or somebody from his from Tidewater will be there to talk to us about what they're going to do, what they they're doing got every, They got every gimmick going as far as electronics no, and video got, yeah. and audio. And, so. yeah, and they're actually up there now. They're ready to start hooking people up to the fiber optic. Yeah. I have it at my house, and it's the best. Yeah. It is strictly fiber optic all the way right to your house. Yeah. It's not coax fiber optic yeah, up here Jeff the road. Jefferson's, they're, they're, they're going for it in Jefferson right yeah. now. Yeah, they're ready, they're ready to rock and roll. So uh, we're anxious to get up there and see all those new gizmos. Well, uh, maybe we'll have our buddy Jeff up there, Jake. Probably. You know, he'll probably yeah. show us some, some neat probably. things. So uh, I suppose we got to get to the paper here, Bobby. Oh, uh, yeah. We well, talked about the pumpkin growth. I mean, 1,958 pounds. What the heck? We might as well talk about a new state record. Right? Yeah, it wasn't a new state record. No? No. It said Pierpont Still? Pierpont Still yeah. is the state yeah. record. Yeah, yeah, that's over 2,000 pounds so, of state record. Anyway. But 1958 was a good year. That was yeah. the year my wife was born. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 1958. Um, boy, that's a, it's grown in Lyman, Maine. The guy's name is Scott Laurent. And uh, we were talking off camera, you know, the, the amount of rain this year made things very interesting. For they didn't growers. get a lot of really big pumpkins this year. They no. had, you know, they had two, two that were in the 17, 1800 mark. And, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, well. they, but they, had a, they had a long gourd squash there that was 12 and a half feet long. It hangs from a trellis. That's how they grow it. Is that going on Main Street? I don't know. I don't know where the heck that's that going. That would be a probably. Art, that could be something an artist could have a field day with. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> Get your mind out of the yeah, gun. All right. So anyway, <laughs> Cock to the County. Our buddy Paul Malin. Yeah. <clears throat> I no, didn't he, realize he had a record that went to number four on the uh, Bluegrass Billboard. That's pretty. Yeah. Pretty. pretty and he was friends with Mary Chapin Carpenter. He's, he played in her band. Yeah. He played in her band when she was in, when he was in college. Yeah, he's very talented. Very yeah. talented. One of the best. Yeah. So anyway, we went to. Uh, yeah, I like he said he broke his tooth playing street hockey, oh, so yeah. he couldn't play the trumpet anymore. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I said I can't wait to see, to see Bobby and ask. Yeah. Did you play street hockey as yeah. a kid? You must have played street yeah. hockey oh, as yeah. a kid. I invented street hockey. So <laughs> anyway, yeah. I mean, you didn't leave when I was a kid. You didn't leave the house without grabbing a hockey stick. Well, yeah. yeah around here it was a baseball yeah. glove. You walk downtown. Football, yeah, you walk downtown. You grabbed a hockey stick, tennis ball, and the, the deal was. We used to pass the ball under cars as it was going by. Yeah. yeah, slap shot. Yeah. <laughs> Did uh, you ever miss like and get a little high inside the door or somebody's window? Yeah. Well, sorry, buddy. <laughs> I didn't really mean to put that tennis ball off yeah, your right. forehead. <laughs> well, we we played street hockey in one guy's house. We broke so many windows, he ended up installing bulletproof glass in the whole back of his house. <laughs> he didn't forbid yeah. you from playing. The other hockey. thing is, we used to check into the garage doors. Yeah, that could get expensive. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we used to ruin garage doors. <laughs> It was a. Uh, oh, shoot. It was, a, it was hell growing up in my town. Oh, yeah. Well, you bean town boys. Yeah, yeah. A little unruly. Well, we uh, had a grand opening down the chamber. What'd you think of it uh -huh. last week? You know, one cool thing about that was there was a lot of local residents. Yeah. You know, not just chamber members. That's right. You know, and that to me was very important. Yep. You know, because people actually were concerned and they, you know, they showed interest in what. You guys pulled off. I yep. mean, it was a fantastic project. You know, a special thing for me was Mrs. Roberts, uh, her grandmother Roberts, Abby Roberts. Yeah. She she conned me, but she had asked me to come over, and she spoke to me. She said this place came out beautiful. The ceremony was really nice. She said I, my husband would have really been proud of this. Yes. So man, that made me feel pretty yeah. good. Made me kind of feel. And like the right word is cornered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Edgecombe, they're going to do more on permit fees over there, building permit fees and, and stuff. And sewer rates. Yeah, sewer rates. Yeah, that's that's going up. I tell you, for, I tell you, folks, every town sewer rates are going to be going up. Yeah. It's just so expensive to run stuff. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, look down on, on the Pump Street there in Newcastle right now. Yeah. Hager's been there all week, and that big equipment in there working ain't yeah. cheap. Yeah. 
You know? I know. South Hunts Meadow Road, they reopened that up in Whitefield. They got that culvert fixed up there, and that, that was a good thing. Culvert problems. Yeah. How about that gorgeous plaque up there for uh, Wright's Landing up in Wright Landing up in Westport Island? It was uh, dedicated to uh, George Richardson Jr., who was a longtime selectman up there in uh, yeah. Westport Island. Yeah. Forever. And uh, so, yeah. And I wonder where, I don't know where Wright's Landing is unless it's down. Well, it's, is it opposite where the power plant used to be? There used to be a boat landing down yeah. there. Yeah. Well, there was a there was a building that actually, uh, I think the town owned the building at one time, and then they they yeah, maybe. actually made a landing on maybe. it. Maybe. So. Yeah. Maybe. I'm not sure. I'm sure people are utilizing. Well, it. 40 years ago, when you used to go climbing there in the wintertime, because Wiscasset would stay open because of the main Yankee, there was a little landing there we could go down and launch our boats there. And, Go down underneath the bridge. Got a new school in uh, Lincoln County, Brightfield School. It's going to be you're saying it's over by where Chonky, it's over where Chonky was, and so they got 50 students, right? Yeah, and, uh, something like that. 50 students are going to be uh, in place-based education. Of course, we had the Juniper Hill School that was in Alden that closed. That closed. Then you had Chonky, and that school closed. Yeah. So, I mean. Well, these schools, how are these schools going to compete with your publicly funded schools that have uh, benefits for teachers, yeah. teachers, you know, well, they're retirement? Gonna have, they're going to have to search outside funding because there's Absolutely. no way there's no way the students' parents are going to pay for it. Yeah. You know, even if you charge a small tuition, it still isn't going to make a dent in it. So they'll have to search for uh, some type of funding for keep these yeah. schools going. Yeah, and now these the Jefferson School Committee out there, they're dealing with a library and what they're going to library material, what they're going to put in the library and what they're not going to put. What's what's politically correct? Come on, give me a break. Mm. Turn the page, Bobby. I, I get tired uh, even thinking. Okay, that. I don't Colby know. and Gale, they're going to put a big to put a minor expansion on. I shouldn't say big expansion. They're gonna make some room up there because they've had a big they've had a big expansion. You know they bought well, Seacoast, now yeah. they bought uh, M W Sewell, right? And I'm sure they've got to have a place for employees. Well, they're talking about the Bisky Road. Yeah, office? Bisky Road. Yeah, I mean that's a that's it's not much square footage there. Those no. people are on top of each and other. And it'll be now. the second or third expansion they've had since they moved out there. Yeah, you know they've been there a while now. I don't know how long they've been up there. Probably 25 years. Yeah, and then you. People don't realize down in back of that building, there's oh, a yes. whole operation. Oh, back. sure is. Actually, my, my buddy Dow runs that whole place out there, the whole propane section. Yep, yep. And uh, yep. storage tanks and oil tanks and whole nine yards is out there. I'll tell you, I bought one of Calvin's. Calvin was down at the Main Street Grocery the other day. You can't turn Calvin down. No. You know? So anyway, 12 bucks. I mean, it's fantastic calendar of his photographs. Yeah. It's unbelievable. So... Sure yeah. enough, I was figuring out who I was going to give it to. Sure enough, there's some lady from New Jersey was staying with me, and she <laughs> loves Darren Scott. Well, she so she went home with a new calendar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cost me 12 bucks. <laughs> yeah, just a pushover, Bobby. Yeah, so. You're a softie. Anyway, so I showed her the calendar. She couldn't stop looking at it. I said, lady, <laughs> breakfast is over. <laughs> so anyway, I had to give it to her. Oh, uh, shoot. Yeah. The Wiscasset students, they visited the ecology school. I'm not sure what that is, but well, the it's in Saco. Well, the ecumenical food pantry there in Newcastle, uh, I mean, that has grown like you would not believe. I mean, look at the picture of these things. Uh, no, baskets. Look at the amount crazy. of work involved to create each one of these boxes. Yep. But anyway, they need help. They need volunteers. So... Anyway, if you want to help for this Thanksgiving, um, you know, I there is so much need for volunteers to reach out, and unfortunately, what you see is just the same people over and over and over. Right. Again. But there's only you're limited to what you and what happens. You get burned out. I'm feeling a little bit of it myself right yeah. now. But, so so but, uh, anyway, I was I was looking at the. Uh, you know, our Veggie's the Table girl, yep. uh, Erica Berman, she was one of the beneficiaries at the Maine Marathon this year. Oh, was she? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, she's getting statewide recognition. Yeah. So the uh, Lincoln House going to host a candlelight vigil. That's going to be on... That's going to be kind of neat. They're going to do it for mothers and, and unborn babies yeah. and babies that... October are, you know, 15th. Yeah. So that, that's kind of... And then the coastliner is going to, they're going to run that train up and down from uh, Brunswick, I think, to, to the Pumpkin Fest this Yeah, weekend. right. Yeah, no, no reservations needed. There was a train running uh, southbound this morning. Oh, was it? Yeah, it blew the whistle like uh, 
42 times. 42? Yeah. It wasn't so, 41, anyway. but it was 42, huh? Yeah. So, the, uh, did you see that Dragon Cement is going to close? Yeah, that's kind of... That's 2025, kind of, folks, that Dragon Cement, I mean... That's the only cement plant in New England. Yeah. I mean, I just, it's crazy. Is cement a dying material? I, no, I don't I would, think so. I would, but yeah. it just makes it expensive that much more because people are going to have to import. There's another one in Glen Falls, New York, there's a cement plant. I think that's the next closest one. Mm -hmm. But if you've got a truck from Glen Falls, New York, up into New England for your cement needs, you're yeah. going to get pricey. Yeah. It's going to get pricey. Glen Falls is about 350, 400 miles. I think, I think Dragon Cement uses the train line. I think they, they used do. to, yeah. Yeah, I think they yeah, still do. Yeah, they used do. to barge cement to Boston, yeah. and that got too expensive. And then they they went to the train. The train wasn't reliable enough, and they had to get trucks because trucks could get there when they customers needed it. Mm. So I don't know. I mean, H. O. Bush out up there in Bangor probably has fifty trailers all set up for this. Yeah. So I don't know what they're going to do. So, mm. not my monkey, not my zoo anymore. No. Yeah. Old Bristol Garden Club, they got a lecturer coming in. His name is Nick Lund, specialist. Um, it's going to meet at the uh, Second Congregational Church, right there where they hold the Newcastle Food Pantry. Yeah. So. He's going to talk about bird safe programs in Maine. Bird safe? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, I was watching something on TV about, you know, birds, how they're hitting these big buildings because they can't see the glass and, yeah. and they're getting killed and whatnot, yeah. and they're hurting the bird population. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, look at these big cities with all the, the big buildings in them and whatnot. Yeah. Wow, well, you don't believe how many chickadees hit our picture oh, window. yeah. yeah. Picture windows. Yeah. And a uh, single vehicle crash up there in Waldeboro. Um, a couple of bad ones. Right on Route 1. Yeah, Boy. a couple of, a couple of one on 32, too. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of bad accidents there. That was a good story about Ralph Johnson. I don't know if you know Ralph. Well, he's no, a good guy. you know him? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's a good guy. Yeah. yeah. And he's and he's right. You you go in there, it's kind of like the old hardware stores you go in where the owner was there. Yeah. And there was always something. He, he could just figure out what... Tr what you needed, what little trinket you needed to yeah. fix this, to fix that, and always come up with it. Don't like, get that. It's like Ames. Ames true value. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, go over Wayne, Wayne say, Wayne, you got something that will fit on this right here, and sure enough, you'll have it. How you doing, Wayne? I know you're a fan. Yeah. Yeah. Wayne and Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Jeff over there. Miss Jeff Law. Yeah. yeah. Nobleboro's going to, they're going to raise their permit fees, plumbing and, plumbing and building permits going up September 25th. Um, yeah, I mean, those are things that you don't start think. Well, you know, this interesting is county commissioners, they prove that uh, county navigator, same thing uh, Buddy Karen Ann Hager does there yes. for Waldeboro and whatnot. Yep. I think she's involved with this right here, too. Mm -hmm. And it really is an interesting thing where, you know, people don't know what to do, where, who to reach out to. Right. She's there. She it steers them for insurance or housing or clothing or food or yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really turned into quite a, quite a deal. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the beauty of that Peer Recovery Center up there that New, Newcastle has opened up right there on Academy Hill, it's going to be a grand opening coming up. They're going to invite all the heavy hitters in that field, but um, they can direct somebody who needs help. Yeah, that's what that's basically you know, what this they, navigator you does. Go, somebody goes into, uh, you know, a you know, a town hall or a police department, they really, they're not educated in that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, they don't know. And Karen Ann knows her stuff, so she does. That's uh, that could be a, that yeah. should be a county. That should be a county wide position. Be. It, it should really be. really should. Yeah. Why should one town br take the take the burn burden. of it? But yeah. the problem with the county thing is people. I think the only thing people think the county to do is if they need the sheriff. Yeah. They call the sheriff. Right. But there's no county ambulance, no county fire, there's no county, there is a county emergency management, but I'm not sure if you have an emergency, you don't reach out to him, you mm -hmm. call your local fire department. So, the only time, police department. You know, yeah, I mean, town police, they got, what is it, what is it, three, I heard a quote, three cruisers for 17 towns? For what? For coverage. For the sheriff? County? For the sheriff? Yeah. No. And, and more I'm, than. I'm talking at night. Oh, maybe at night. Night. Three yeah. cruises. Because I was saying, the daytime, you find three of them in Mike's place anytime you want. <laughs> 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 That's probably not fair, but, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you see them there often. Stop him for a coffee.
Russ, yeah. Russ Harm's going to be back on the uh, previous member of the school committee down there in South Bristol. Yeah, he's going back and on. He's going back. Yeah. You know? Well, somebody twisted his arm. Yep. Sarah Mitchell's been the she's been the head of the school committee down there for quite a while. She, they, you know, they got a good thing going down there. That little school. Yeah. Apple Fest, sweet success. Um, did you go up? I didn't go up, but I could see that there was it was very popular. Yeah. There was a lot of people up yeah. there. Yeah, I forgot all about it. I normally go to the dump on Saturday or the transfer station on Saturday morning, Bobby, and I, I went Friday. Yeah. Thought, forgot all about the Apple Fest on Saturday. Well, you could have killed two birds yeah, with one coulda. stone there. Yeah, could have. Yeah, didn't didn't do that. Glenn's got quite a sketch of a pumpkin. That's man. quite a <laughs> that's quite a sketch. Boy, isn't it? that is. That's, that's not your pickup going underneath there, is it? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it could. It could could yeah. fit. So yeah. anyway, editorial about pumpkin fever. Um, so a good picture of the Hager boys down there working. Placing a water line on Pump Street. Yeah, that was a. a I actually got out of the car and I, you know I'm on the sewer board and I was talking to the guys. But anyway, the uh, boy, it really you don't understand what it entails until you get. I mean, you think you just dig a hole? This is, no, 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 no. This no you got to dig true. a hole. You got to dig a ditch and then you got to put so much so much sand underneath the pipe and put the pipe down. So much sand over the pipe and oh, that's crazy. Hardy Roots has got a new board member, Lee, See that. Lee Bauer. Yeah. Lee or Leah, depending on how Leah. She, she pronounces it. Um, so. I see they're going to do something down to Francis Perkins. I had a, I actually had a chance to meet Giovanna Gray Lockett here a week or so ago. Uh -huh. Very pleasant lady. Yeah. She's the new executive director down there. Right. And they're going to do a talk down to Francis Perkins with Derek Lee, Liebert. Yeah. So. Probably no relation to Damon. Uh, no, well, I don't think so. No. Rising Tide Co-op, they're, uh, they're giving a little contribution to the Morris Farm Trust. Morris Farm Trust, they're, I mean, Morris Farm's hanging in there. They... They uh, yep. care about them having problems, but they seem to hang in there. Got a lot of stuff. The uh, Homer Brown. You heard anything about Homer Brown? I haven't. Yeah, that was the. Uh, I haven't. Uh, shotgun a, wedding on a main coastal island. Yeah, I I haven't. I mean, we interviewed over there, and I saw the some of the highlights from uh, 207 show the other night, but I haven't. I didn't go. They were on 207. They were. Yeah. 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 That's good press. Yeah. Maine Yankee Community Advisory Panel. Ha. Huh. Do you suppose they're ever going to figure out what to do over there? Yep. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I don't know. So there was, they're mentioning uh, the main, I said earlier, the main marathon gave to, uh, they, they uh, visit the table at Grow to Donate Farm in Newcastle or receive $15,750 just from the main marathon. Yeah. Here's so. something we could do, Bobby. Silent meditation retreat. Probably uh, after this pumpkin fest, I could use a you know, silent meditation. Si I think silent me meditation retreat for us would, would be probably be... Torture. Yeah, pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty yeah. sure. Imagine I sit there for an hour and not say anything. I tell you, folks, here's, um, talk about the uh, up, up at the uh, Waldo, November 11th. There's a guy named Matt Nicoa. He is so talented. Let me tell you, he is some kind of some kind of singer. And uh, Marilyn Bean is. Uh, she's, was, she seemed like she had a good week. I yeah, mean, but she's cut down. She's only got two columns, Bobby. Yeah. She but, must have had a pretty slow week up well, there. Or she's busy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Hannaford, they're going to join the Northeast Organic Family Farm Partnership. Not sure what that all means, but. You know, every week you can learn about a different cemetery. The <laughs> Peterborough Cemetery. Where's that one? Yep, it's on it's Bunker on, Hill Road in Warren. Huh. <clears throat> Peterborough Cemetery. Hmm. Bunker Hill Road in Warren. It's not the Bunker Hill Road you and no, I know. No. It's in Warren. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Peace Gallery. What do they got going on there? Uh, uh, I don't know what she's got going on. Well, there's a play going on. Um, so anyway, it's going to be 730 
October 6th, so it's tomorrow night, folks. Yeah, the Woody Guthrie <coughs> American Song, <coughs> Mission is Free. Over in Bristol, of course, they got that new history center over there. It's going to be closing for the season October 7th, so you want to go over there at the old mill. Um, check that out. Did you hear down at King's Row that they looks like they've got somebody's going to that they're going to have some Steve Brackett is going to take it over. Steve Brackett. That's Martha Brackett's <clears throat> Steve Brackett. Steve Brackett. I know a Stevie Brackett, but I don't know if it's the same one. It might be his son. I can't imagine Steve Brackett, that was a year old, a couple years older than I am, yeah. would take it over. But he yeah. might have had a son, Stephen. Right. Good. Boy, I tell you, Foxcroft Academy must have won some football team. Bobby, that was that was an old-fashioned whooping. Yeah. Uh, we were there. We filmed it, and Are it was just good. Or they were that good. Yeah. They was impressive. They really? could throw the ball. They could run the ball, and they really? could kick. They had a kid that was on kickoffs was kicking it 65 yards into the end zone. In the end zone every time, and uh -huh. they did it seven times. <laughs> he uh -huh. scored, they scored six, five, five touchdowns, Boy. and point afters every time right up the middle. This kid could kick, but I mean, what was really impressive is they were just so balanced. I think probably they're one of the top two, three teams in the state. Well, they, the they beat Walbury that bad. They got oh, they, they just Walbury had no Madomic had no answer for them. No hmm. answer whatsoever. And it might have been, you know, Madomic dropped an, an easy interception in the on the second or third play of the game. If he had picked that off, he'd have gone for the touchdown because nobody was it might have changed the tempo, but I'm not sure. They've only given up one touchdown in six games. You know, well, yeah, so when you've scored almost three hundred points and your opponent scored six, you're probably gonna win a few games. Lincoln's <laughs> got a Lincoln's got a couple of golfers going to the Going yeah. to the state tournament. You got Kellen Atticus and uh, Damon Ellenwood are going to the state championship. That's uh, quite yeah. a feat. And Brooks Trapmill, this is a big, big deal. They won the Walterboro Co ed softball championship. Yeah. And did you hear about that Festival of Champions cross country meet over there in no. Belfast? Yep. There's like 2,000 kids come up all over New England. Belfast yeah. has been doing this. My daughter called me on it. She yeah. said, You know, you know anything about it? I said, no. She told me about it. But Lincoln Girls ran ninth out of how many teams? Like 30 teams or something like that? 61. 61, 61 teams. And they came and in ninth. ninth. Yeah. Man, and it's, I guess it's a beautiful course, and Belfast really done a good job with it. And uh, I don't know how the boys did. Huh. Yeah. They had a girl, Lincoln Lincoln had a girl, Chloe Anderson. She finished 19th. Yeah. Fastest freshman. Yeah. Yeah. So, Bobby, we only got through the first section because we had so much to talk about the pumpkin fest. Uh, well, and we're out of time. We're out of time, Bob. You believe that we're out of time? Well, That's better than meditation, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, folks, we invite you to come down. The Pumpkin Fest probably going to get rained out for the parade on Saturday, yeah. but uh, you know we'll be around all weekend. The regatta is Monday morning, starts at nine o'clock. Yours truly yeah. and all the team from LCTV will be down there. Bobby's sausages will be at the uh, by Schooner Landing, and yep. uh, it'll be a fun weekend. Yeah, it always is. It's Tons a fun. Actually, it's a fun time around my side. I got a table oh, set yeah. up, oh, yeah. and we got. I, I may have to make. We a, got tunes going. I'm going to make a start. You're going to be down there Friday too. No, you know. Oh, you're not going to be there Friday. Sunday and Monday. Uh, we'll have to be down there because we got Scholastic Magazine. They'll want to come see these sausages. Uh, and that's on Friday. They're going to be here Friday through Monday. Okay. So we'll, we'll catch up with you. So All folks, right. thanks for watching. He's the man of the mills, Bobby Weir, Larry Seidling, and Dinah Day behind the canna. Old, boy, old buddy at TV, Toby, he's getting up. He's, he's had enough. So we'll say enjoy the Pumpkin Fest, and we'll see you next time. Chase Tree and Tractor Service with 25 years of experience in tree removal. Serving the mid-coast of Maine, licensed and insured Maine arborist. Whether it's a pesky blowdown or a hard-to-get tree that needs removal. When you need an experienced professional, Jake Chase is the man for the job. Call 207-242-8961 or email him at chasetreeattractorservice.jc at gmail.com. LCTV is your nonprofit community media station. Please donate at lctv.org to keep us strong. Thank you.